I'm going to send them your nudes. He threatened to expose me. We got into a big argument because I was there asking for my money again. I used to ask for it every other time. Their lifestyles are actually financed by women. We are just like friends with benefits. He was very, very romantic. <laughs> in case you're new here but if you're a time subscriber you guys i love you so much this you already know so yeah welcome to my channel today we are doing something different i'm actually giving you guys a story time and as we speak it's the first day of february so it's on first yeah so i'm going to be giving you guys a story time about me uh while i was in campus it's something that i wouldn't like on a normal day like share with anyone but this year we are doing things afraid and i'm happy to share with people maybe it can help you or it can encourage you not even encourage you i know it might be of help to someone and i wouldn't want you to do or to go to something i underwent back then but i have my fair share of experiences and yeah this channel is all about positive vibes about being authentic being original i know we've all done some things in the past that we're not proud of it i'm not ashamed of it it's just uh it's just an incident that happened it made me stronger and wiser so without further ado let's dive into the video let's dive into the video so i don't know how to go about it i wanted to do my makeup while i am talking to you guys telling you the story time or I do my makeup off camera very fast and then come when I'm all glammed. I, I'm, I'm really torn in between. So yeah, let's start with my eyebrows. So I have nothing on my face. I just put on Vaseline. And I'm just now brushing my eyebrows. This is not a tutorial. I'm here to give you a story time. I love story times and I feel like I've gone through a lot of stuff. I don't really mind sharing with you guys maybe you can learn from it i feel good letting them out because i think it comes with healing so this is foundation i'm not a makeup artist guys don't judge the way i'm doing my makeup back then when i was on campus around my second year of campus life i was going through a breakup at the time and i've just recently gotten a job so i know i haven't said it out loud before actually no one knows even in my family that i used to work while in campus though my mom doesn't know my dad too doesn't know but my dad does watch my videos so uh, i think the cat is out of the bag so i'm saying i used to work while in campus for like one year and you know what type of job the promo girls here yeah, i was one of them i used to be a promo girl when i was in campus from second year to that year then i did quit the job because i wasn't really seeing the need of it because i wasn't actually balancing you know when you're working you have studies of course one must suffer and i figured out i really don't want to like jeopardize my career i want to focus on it so that i can have more time to like work on my grades and everything i'm just sharpening my eye pencil it's so small i've sharpened my eye pencil off camera and they're actually misbehaving i need new ones so i'm going to use this eyeshadow palette it has a mirror so it's the one i'll be looking at i just called things off with my then boyfriend my ex and I was single so at this time the work did keep me busy so first of all i really appreciate the fact that i was working at this time because it used to keep me busy i met new friends in that job so all of us are just from the same campus i used to work on weekends though from friday to sunday 
it was a seasonal thing by the way it was not every weekend there is work so it was really fun i must say that i used to enjoy and look forward to that apart from the exhaustion that it comes with and you know when you're fatigued even attending lectures on monday i used to be like ah i wasn't like a hundred percent so i just had to quit after a while but i really enjoyed it and it really helped me within that period of healing of stabilizing because we had dated for quite some time uh, this guy sends a dm when i remember the incident i feel a lot of resentment to this guy because i feel like he put me through something that wasn't fair and there are so many ways to go about it as in you guys will understand in a few just a normal day i get a dm from this guy i went on his page and i looked through and i was like eh, he looks fine and it happened that i knew him from from way back in high school not really like in person he's a guy that a lot of girls really loved when we were in high school he was one of the cutest they used to say him sending me a dm it wasn't like from a place of uh he's really a stranger to me because sometime back when i was with my ex he also inboxed me on on facebook and he was like i see you're dating i really wanted you and blah 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 and i was like no you know i'm dating and a lot of people knew that we were dating with my ex because we used to post each other <laughs> on facebook so that time when he was hitting on me through facebook i dismissed him and was like you know i'm dating and all that and i cut off the communication with him years later he sends me a dm i replied to the dm by the way i don't want to mess i replied to his dm and we started talking like hi hi he asked me are you still dating with that guy and i'm like no we actually broke up recently and oh and he started like consoling me and i was like ah it's okay nini nini i was there telling him of the bad days and he was there encouraging me telling me ah don't worry things will be fine this is life this is how life is sometimes you break up you make up and yeah so from there he sent me his number uh via the dm and told me to whatsapp him i didn't like think too much of it so i did that i don't know if it's immediately but i texted him via whatsapp and told him hey it's me and yeah we kicked off and we started talking via whatsapp normal things yes he was hitting on me and at the time honestly i wasn't into him he was cute and all but at the time i knew i was very specific i knew that my type of guy should be like dark dark skin tall and handsome you know most of us do want that so that was me then but my taste has evolved now <laughs> so when he was actually hitting on me i wasn't looking for something serious in that period of course you know you ask each other questions told me that he's currently studying at usiu and i told him i'm at this university as in normal conversation just getting to know each other more second week came we started saying i think we should meet up uh i can come to your school this time and then next time we can come we'll be alternating and he was acting like we are an item but i wasn't actually looking for a boyfriend in him because first of all he was light skin i don't know it's not even about the color but so he just wasn't my type and another thing i really don't like bowlers you know like he really used to like present himself as if he's a rich kid he's a bowler and everything he has money and of course i also assumed so because he said he was in usiu and most of the students there are bowlers come from rich families so i was really skeptical and also because i was not seeing a heartbreak so i told this guy okay i don't mind like meet him that is not a big deal to me he started planning i was like okay cool i don't mind you can come over 
So I shared with my friends and I told them, by the way, I met this guy by a DM and this and this and he's planning to come over. And my best friend at that time, uh, I had two best friends. One of them was a tomboy and the other one was really girly. My main best friend who was that tomboy told me that, you know what, let me leave the house to you and she will stay at a really nice one bedroom house. And I was like, no, you know, I don't really like pretending. If somebody really loves me, I prefer them to love me for who I am. And I don't want to start with guys. I don't want to, like, just to anyone, not necessarily even because it was maybe a potential relationship, even though I wasn't into him. I was telling them, no, I really don't think it's a good idea for you to leave your house to me so that I can pretend it's actually my house. I don't think it's necessary and I was telling them if he really likes me then he will be comfortable at my place I was living in this single room and they thought that I needed to please the guy at he like get a one bedroom you know I don't know I think you guys can understand but I was like insisting, no, I'm really comfortable at my place. I honestly don't like pretending. That's something about me. And I'm very, very contented with, I've always been this person who's always contented with where they are and who they are. And I don't fake it. I don't. And if you have a problem with that, I don't know. Because first of all, he wasn't even paying for me rent and why would i be going to pose as somebody else i don't i don't get it i don't get how people think so i was like yeah he's coming at this date the night before he came to our school because he was coming all the way from nairobi he told me hey babe how you doing we just were chatting like normal he even used to call me he used to video call me i even met his friend via the video call you know could just think everything is so real you know the tactic they use let me not spoil the stories for you guys so the night before he came we were just talking the way we do and he was telling me hey babe and in the middle of us talking he went like yo babe i'm really stranded right now and i asked him why are you stranded and he was like tokens our lights have gone off and I was like, wow, sorry, so what you gonna do? And he was telling me that he wanted to pay the tokens, but he couldn't because M-Pesa place at he is closed. And my day it was something like seven, seven something. It wasn't even, <laughs> I was so naive and he was like, maybe you have something in your M-Pesa, you send me, I pay the token. And uh, yeah, I'll refund you. And I was like, okay, cool. It was actually that end of month period and I had some money. I actually had rent already. I wanted to pay rent. And I was like, yeah, I was having an emergency. My rent can wait for like the next day, you know. Uh, I know he'll have refunded me the money because I didn't tell him I was using rent by the way. I just told him, yeah, I have money in my pesa. Let me send you. I asked him how much do you need for your tokens and he told me a G is enough. A G is 1,000 shillings, 1,000 Kenya shillings. So I didn't see it as a big deal. I was like, ah, things happen. I didn't even think in terms of why wouldn't he ask somebody whom they're closer. You know, men asking women for money, red flag, red flag. And then it's the early stage. You're not even an item yet. We're just getting to know each other. Well, I don't think like that was right. I actually believe he could have asked if it was a genuine thing, he could have asked another friend or family, you know, why ask somebody whom you, you're not even like dating, you're not even that close. Ah, I didn't think much of it then. So I sent him the money and we continued talking as usual and we planned and he was telling me that he'll have arrived by 4 p.m. and I was like, okay, cool. The day he was meant to come over was on Saturday. So that happened, fast forward, he came. And when he came, 
I was actually at my friend's place, my best friend's place, which is far away from my place. My friends really wanted to meet him and I was like, ah, I don't mind. And when they saw him, they were so excited. They were shouting and they were like, wow, he's so cute. Aki, don't let him go. Just feel yes. Date with this guy. You deserve all the good things and whatnot. So they were so excited to meet him. And yeah, he was so cool, by the way. He treated them so nicely. And we stayed at my friend's place for about 20 minutes. Uh, took some juice. And I told you, I told him, this is not actually my place. Let's go to my place. And we did that. So I asked him, because it's far away from here, should we take a motorbike? And he was like, no, let's just walk. Do you foot? And I was like, yeah, I do foot. And here we were. He was very, very romantic, by the way, that I must say. He held my hand and we were walking. If you saw us then you would think like we are dating you know so we went and it was such a decent like around 30 minutes or 40 plus we weren't rushing we're just going with a slow pace so we went and didn't find the need to explain to him like oh i live in a single room i was honestly proud of myself and where i lived i didn't need to prove to anyone about anything that's just me so i finished with my eyebrows and now i want to do uh my lip and i want this nude shade so i'm going to outline my lips with this color which is purple it's a purple shade we went and finally we got to my place he didn't act surprised he acted so cool, which made me comfortable because, you know, so many people associate with uh, people living in such houses as poor or something like that. Tantam woke up. I can't talk when I'm doing my lips. You guys can hear Tam Tam. I really can't multitask. How my lips are looking like. So let me go check on Tam Tam. I'll be back to finish up the story for you guys. This is how my makeup is looking. I don't think I initially I wanted to do my eyeshadow too so yeah we'll see about that when i come back i'm back guys so i didn't do anything else to my face i just decided to stay like that i didn't even powder my face so i'm back to finish up with the story time tam tam is currently taking his second nap and please forgive the background noise there's some cars motorbikes passing but i'm sorry guys because it's almost in the evening it's kind of rush hour so yeah let's continue from where we left so we did arrive at the place we arrived at my house i was living in the unpopular part of the school uh, in the place where not so many students loved for some reason but it was a very very affordable place and i actually liked it i really did like it because it was near Mm, homesteads and farms and every morning as you go to school you could see cows farmers and it was just like a village you know but I didn't mind it I loved it and one thing about me I'm just so contented and I wouldn't want to live somewhere where I know I wouldn't afford it or I would apply so much pressure to my parents so I lived at this place and I'd lived here for quite some time, so I ushered him in. He was very comfortable, and I even forgot about how people feel about the place because he made me feel so comfortable and secure. So nothing much this night. We just ushered him, and our stories were just like the way 
we chat he was even more interesting in person we did chat we talked we laughed we watched a movie you know it's our first time meeting nothing was weird actually this guy you wouldn't suspect that he's a con uh because okay i don't know if it's right to call him a con you people will be the judge at the end of the story you'll understand why i'm calling him a con so here we are in my house watching a movie the guy came with his bag he had these fancy shoes everything about him was a bit fancy if i might say so and at that time even on ig he was one of these people who are famous you know and he used to post very very dope pictures so two days before this he had gone to get his tattoo so he had this big tattoo on this arm so it was still fresh and he used to apply vaseline yeah the tattoo was cute he was into tattoos he had a couple of tattoos and he was light skin and Initially I wanted to say his name or even post his pictures because of what he put me through afterwards because I didn't deserve that. He took advantage of me and for that I'll never like be okay with the situation. Everything else that happened was consensual, but anyway, it's life. I underwent my character development. So by the way, I really learned a lot from this nigga such that later on i was very very cautious uh later on when i was open to dating i have to like be so sure about you because personally i really trust people easily and i'm so kind i will sacrifice my lunch so that i can give you or i will i will just do anything for people i'm down for or even strangers naturally i'm just kind and so many people tell me that i should protect my heart because it's easy to hurt me so that said uh guy my battery is about to die anyway so we stayed in the house had fun i cooked dinner we ate and more amazing time together i can't complain about the time we spent together it was awesome 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 and remember i'm not dating so the first weird thing that happened uh he stayed at my place for one week remember this guy was saying that he's in usiu and at that time it was around november i don't know if the system is different or i really don't know for us we were about to do our exams and he wasn't even bothered with school for some reason i believe that he was lying he was in usiu i believe he was lying i believe it was just a cover up and he was trying to build up a personality that's not him and to make it believable to girls i believe that he was preying on girls like those girls i believe he's just a con man allow me to say i'll say it is a con man and he's not to be trusted so think so okay everything was okay so we stayed with him in the house one week and some few days almost two weeks by the way he wasn't in a hurry he was even so comfortable so i used to go to my lectures and leave him in the house because why would i fear this guy is from usiu as in i was just dumb guys very very dumb so on that weekend on that first weekend we just stayed indoors and even when we were chatting when you were chatting before us meeting he used to tell me like babe i want to spoil you i'll take you to places i'll take you to big clubs i'll take you to you know fancy restaurants and i'm like okay okay i didn't even like yarn but he was just faking it all so freddy comes and he's in the house i tell him hey my friend just hit me up and told me that she has an event that you can attend in town so are you down can we go together and the nigga goes like oh you know i can't go today i accidentally touched my dd with pili pili what is it called with paper so one thing about this guy he was so romantic that i won't lie i think it's just a tactic maybe it's not even romantic <laughs> i think it's just a tactic that he, okay i'm holding my hair killer so why okay it's because it's a new hair anyway let me stop so it's unprofessional 
So this guy, I tell him, my friends are calling me so that you can go out. Are you okay with it? Because they would also love to see you, my other girlfriend, two of my girlfriends. I told them that the guy is around and I remember that he said that he's down for such things and he doesn't mind taking me. So I was like, okay, we can all go together. I didn't want to leave him in the house, but I actually didn't think that he will turn down the offer. So he just gave a funny excuse and at that time I was like, ah, oh, okay. But I didn't want to overthink it because I didn't want to overthink the whole thing because I was in a good mood and I just wanted to go have fun. Remember, I wasn't I wasn't into this guy. For me, I just felt like we were just like friends with benefits. That's one of the reasons like cool with him coming all the way to my place. And that was it. So I asked the nigga, can we go out? And he said that he accidentally touched his mini with paper and now it's really really itchy it's so painful and remember before all this offer before i told him the offer that my friends had posed he hadn't mentioned anything of the sort so i'm saying how this happened but it's not believable okay if you're a guy okay I, have you ever even done that okay i don't know yeah it's just gross i know but i think he was in a rush to dismiss the offer that he really looked for a lame excuse because it doesn't make sense boo. it doesn't uh, i was okay with it because i was used to going out with my friends so i actually so i didn't tell you i was saying this guy was so romantic he used to cook for me every day i used to come from school and find food ready uh the house is clean as in you know he used to he was so romantic he was very very romantic so he used to cook good meals anyway. So I could actually like believe 1% that maybe uh, the probability, I don't know. So, okay, why were you even touching your, your nini in the first place? When you didn't wash your hands after cooking? Okay, but he used to love like putting, putting a lot of chili in the food. And I didn't mind it because I love it too. So I get ready when he's there and he's actually helping me and he's telling me, no, put on this dress. It's much cuter or put on this, this purple lipstick, put on, you know, he was actually helping me out. And I was like, wow, this guy is nice. Before I left the house, he actually said like, be careful. Don't be leaving people in the house. You don't know people. And I was like, ah, okay. At that time, I didn't even think hard about that statement. I was just like, Maybe he's advising me generally, like, not to be trusting just anyone. I didn't know that he was actually saying, I didn't, I didn't know, like, he was actually talking about himself. I go out with my friends, we have fun, I come back the next day, I find him, he receives me so well, he treats me so nicely, and we continue with how we were living. I didn't even bother him, asking him when he's going back. I didn't want to, like, I didn't want it to look like i was chasing him away but honestly i was feeling like he's in my space I actually get bored very very easily with i just love my company and i was going to school i felt like he was getting bored everything he used to borrow me my laptop and he used to borrow me my laptop and my phone like every other time i don't know what he was doing but at the time i didn't I'm so easy, like I'm so easy. I wouldn't have thought a teenager kutana. I wouldn't have thought that I can meet a, a guy who is going to take advantage and all that. He used to borrow my phone and he used to go online with it. And remember, we didn't used to sit uh, in the same place. So he used to sit in the bed and I was in the chair and just doing my thing, maybe on my laptop or revising because our exams were around the corner. So this guy used to use my phone so many times. He was always on my laptop. And I just assumed all these things. I just thought maybe I didn't want also to bombard him with a lot of questions. I never used to like query or find it suspicious. I was just like, ah, I thought he's just borrowing my phone innocently. So I used to put the password for him until I just share the password with him. I even asked for my phone and just take it for himself and use it because he now knew the password. And I remember, so all this time this nigga is in my house, is not even talking about the money that I did lend him. Da, even, to me, it was such a huge amount of money then, 
but I didn't want to act paranoid and I was like, okay, he'll know that if he borrowed me money, he must have known that I intended to use it for some reason. Him not knowing the reason doesn't really matter. What matters if, if you know you've borrowed somebody money, however little it is, just do the right thing. Return it to them without them having asked for their money because I don't get it. How do you borrow somebody money and just act like as if nothing happened, as if that never happened. So I never asked for the money. I was waiting for him to refund me the money. I didn't even tell him that it was money for my rent. So all this time I have the remaining amount of the rent. I have the remaining amount of my rent in my phone but I'm actually waiting for him patiently to refund me my money so that I can pay my landlady, that I can pay my landlady. But that never happened. And for some reason, I was just afraid to ask him for my money because I'm like, why should I ask you for my money yet you borrowed me and I gave it to you when you needed it the most, when no one else in your contact list could have given you the money? I didn't get that. So I was like, ah, let me just give him time. He remembers. Let me not just put pressure on him. He'll refund me my money when he gets it. But I hoped that it was very soon because I was getting late on paying my rent. So one week has passed and I used to pay my rent and man, every other time I was never late on paying my rent. So this weekend... Uh, he says that he'll be leaving for, he tells me that he'll be leaving for Nairobi on Sunday. So Sunday comes and he wakes up in the morning, prepares and he's about to leave. And obviously, because I know that he doesn't know where we are and the area, you know. Actually, when he used to cook, I never showed him the marketplace. I don't know how he figured it out. Good, good cooked meals. So I was always like... But it's not a really, it's not that far from the marketplace. So maybe he has a round or something. So it didn't bother me, but I was always happy to find food cooked. That was such a nice gesture. On Saturday, because we're just chilling in the house, I wore my sweatpant, a maroon sweatpant. And on Sunday, he was like, can you please give me this sweatpant so that I can rock it when I'm going today? And when you come to you say you, you'll come back with it. And I was like, ah, oh, no, you won't fit it. He was tall, very tall than me. I had this thing he used to do. And he was so convincing and he sounded so real. And I was like, oh, okay. Because he even said, like, you'll come next week. You don't want to come next week. After exams, you're going to come. And I was like, not even for that, but I was just feeling like, ah. Where will you even share clothes with you right now? In the back of my mind. And I was like, I. And he borrowed me a sweatshirt that he had seen. I just hung it there and some goggles, some, what is it called? Some shades. How would you borrow a girl? I don't get it. As in, he was just not acting like a man. If you ask me, like, these are not things that men are supposed to be doing unless you're in a relationship with somebody or your best friend is somebody. You just don't go picking items from women's places. You remember I told you guys about it. Remember I told you guys the time I was going out with my friends, he he stated that you shouldn't be comfortable leaving people home. It's not right. It's not safe. So I should take care. And then I didn't even think much of it. So he was actually referring to himself, the way I put it, because the way I came to realize later on after all this incident, so I took him to the stage and we had normally and we said bye bye. I actually had no feelings for this guy, honestly, honestly. I didn't like him. I didn't even like him, leave alone loving him. I just dated this one guy and I thought that I was into like dark guys and I was convinced like from here henceforth it's just dark men, dark men, dark berries, dark juice. <laughs> So this nigga had the audacity to leave my place and thereafter we never like spoke. I think we never spoke because I remember I had to initiate the chat to ask him if he arrived safely. Like days later because he didn't even bother to tell me that his 
he has arrived at his place safely. Hey, how are you? Did you arrive home safely? You didn't say so. Uh, I hope you're okay. I was actually, well, I wanted to remind you of the money, the G I sent you. I would love to use it. And he, he went like, oh, okay. If you're a rich guy or you have rich parents, why will you be borrowing me money at 7 p.m.? Why wouldn't you have borrowed your parents? And even after borrowing me, why would you have returned it? You came all the way to my place and you didn't even bother to like give me the money. And then I was just, this money was like everything to me. It was a lot of money to me. It was a lot, a lot, a lot of money. So I asked the guy, so when are you planning to refund me the money? Because I wanted to use it. And it was actually two weeks later, we were, we were actually mid-month. And remember, I've not yet paid the other month. It's the money I'm looking for to pay the other month so that I can top it up to what to whatever balance I have. And the nigga starts talking like as if he's entitled. And I'm like, yo, we even started arguing over the money. And I'm like, no, give me my money. I really need it. Now I was so vulnerable. This guy wants to play me. Why is he acting this way? And I kept on telling him about the money like for days. And lucky for me, I got a gig. So I went to work on that weekend when now I officially blocked him. We got into a big argument because I was there asking for my money again. I used to ask for it every other time because I needed the money. Why is it such a big deal for you to like send me the money? Once I've reminded you like twice or so and start giving me excuses like, oh, I'm waiting for this thing. I'm waiting for this. Nigga, were you not the one who was telling me that you... It was all a scam, guys. So I'm telling you guys this story because later on, recently actually, okay, later, let me finish up with the story first. Later on, I, so within this period of anger and feeling like I'm betrayed, like I trusted you like a friend, like I thought I was helping you out. I scratched your back and now you're leaving me in a messy situation, you know. So I told my friends like you know what this guy and this guy did this and this and they actually told me that he's a con all this that he's doing and the way he was behaving it was like he was after something what we concluded was he preyed on me because on instagram i look like a rich kid and he thought maybe i come from a good place and my house is furnished and he could get away with something or use me and manipulate me so that i could finance you know these guys who are so cute but their lifestyles are actually financed by women they go on preying on women and depending on them manipulating them giving them all the love that the women think they need they are so romantic they're so loving you know he's such a guy and i don't know why somebody would live on somebody else's i don't know so lucky for me i wasn't like a rich person because I can imagine the damage that that could have cost me. So I believe this is all a story that he tells people depending on where you're from. If you're a student, he'll pose like a student. If you're working class, he'll pose, you know, something of the sort. And you wouldn't doubt it because the way he dresses so, so perfectly. His Instagram photos, he looks like he's been to posh places. You will never think like he's a con person. But... I just want to tell you guys to be careful like whoever you meet on social media make sure you really are very very certain if they are the person they pose to be do a bit of research on them don't just be going trusting people easily like i did i was naive i was from a place of pain i was heartbroken too i just ended things with my then boyfriend things were just tough for me and I was just stressful. I wasn't in the right place to make such decisions. I made the decision to like allow him to come to my place so hastily. I think I should have done better. Mm, yeah, I think I was 19 years or 20 years then. So baby girl. Anyway, I'm proud of my decisions. Like I did learn. So why I'm telling you this 
story. So later on, now when we ended this, when I was so mad, I was so furious, and I ended up telling him all the words that are heavy because I was so frustrated. Why would he be doing this to me? So it was on a Friday, it was on a Saturday evening, and I was reporting to work, the promo job. And I was with my friend, we were going to thrift a little bit. I actually didn't thrift because I knew I had no money on me. I'm trying to raise my rent balance, my rent area. So I went and my friend was shopping. I was just so stressed throughout this period, throughout this season. In class, I was so stressed because 1,000 bob is a lot of money for me then. it was Even now, it's a lot of money. And I didn't know where I could get it from. I couldn't tell my parents. So I was happy at least we got this job. And I knew by the time this job comes to an end, by the time we are on Sunday, I would have gotten money to pay my rent. At least there was some light. And I was beginning to like be like to be certain that I'll get the money. And I was so mad at him. And I felt that I had nothing to lose. So... I texted him and I told him, you're a thief. Why would you do that? 1,000 shillings. You said you're rich and all that. And he was also like talking badly. And this is where, like what he was saying, as in he was not a genuine person, by the way. It's something they do. It's something he does to like trick women. To As in, I was just a victim, but you know, I learned. So this evening I go to work. I arrive at my workstation and I'm there calling him, telling him, yo, why are you doing this? You told me two weeks, two weeks are over. Please give me my money. It actually started on a light note. I was just like, very okay. But the way he was responding, he was responding as if I'm not getting the money back. Like, really? 1,000, is it something to ask for? And I was like, so mad at him. He was actually getting me more angrier. So that's what happened to me then. And I learned a lot. After this, I can never, like, it's so, it was so rare for me to, like, lend a guy money after this experience. And unless I know you, I really, really know you, and you're my friend. And I really learned a lot not to be trusting people easily. Imagine if something worse could have happened. Maybe it could have carried my stuff. We believed that. The statement was addressing my house. What if I had valuables in the house? I used to leave this guy in the house. I don't know. You know, like, I don't have any trace about him. I'm actually looking at the park. There are warthogs and a buffalo. Not buffalo, buffalo as well. I'll show you guys in a minute. So, this guy, what if I had valuables in the house, jewelry that were expensive, or even electronics? He can... It can go with them, but actually, thank God, I was so simple. I didn't have any valuable in that house apart from my laptop. And it's an old laptop, so even if he went to that, I just had a laptop and a gas. As in, there was nothing in that house, you know. And I don't know how many people he's done this to. It's so sad and very, very unfortunate, but I'm glad I got my lesson. And actually, that same day, I met a person who is a blessing. You guys, I'm going to tell you that story time on my next story time because they are kind of linked. And yeah, it was a blessing in disguise. And I thank God for the lesson. It was stupid, but you know, life. Why I'm telling you guys this story time is because a close friend of mine told her this story because I'm never ashamed of it. If it can be beneficial to somebody, I'll tell it out. I'm not even ashamed. I'm very, very proud because I got my lesson and I'm happy to help another person, to inspire, to educate. So whoever you meet on these online platforms, whether it's the dating sites or Instagram, Facebook, any other place, clubs, be careful. Don't trust easily. Before you allow somebody to your house, to your space, you know, things are happening. So many things are happening. People are killing each other. Just be careful. Love yourself, baby girl. Don't trust easily. So I'm giving you this story time because a close a close person to me, we realized that the same guy texted her. Imagine. 
and the same thing the same things he used to tell me are the same things he's telling her and it reached a point the chick it reached a point the chick was asked for her number and he didn't she didn't give her so the guy ended up blocking her so i wanted to see how far it will go so that i could see if he's in business because you don't do that so my phone actually went off that's why i rushed doing the outro so i was saying this guy uh also like was preying on somebody who is so close to me and i had told my friend i told that person about this story but she didn't know it's the same person he uses the same tactic and it was such a coincidence to find him preying on a person that i actually know but i'm so sure he doesn't know that we are close or related we are actually related not even close and i was there like feeling so pity of how many people he has done even worse too and i forgot to mention that what hurt me the most from this encounter is he threatened to expose me and he told me that what do you think i was doing with your phone what do you think i was doing with your laptop i took your dad's number and i took your mom's number so try to tell people what i did try to tell people what i did i'm going to expose i'm going to send them your nudes and wow i was so scared i lived in fear i was like oh my god he used to take nudes of me how true this is i don't know maybe he was just bluffing I told him that i'm going to expose you this is something you do to women and it's so wrong no one deserves this you can just find a relationship and be happy in it stop living off people's sweat and imagine if i was rich or had money god this guy could have done so much damage i even gave that close person a go ahead you can have that guy you can date with him actually didn't have any feelings and i don't mind him maybe he can change maybe he has even changed no he hasn't he's still doing the same thing because he was telling the chick the same things he used to tell me and he actually sends you the number so that you'll be the one to initiate the text via whatsapp and he can be there telling you all the lies in this world it's not fair i hope i just pray that he changes and i hope he's not hurt many people and i'm so sure he's one of the guys if exposed by edgar somebody should just expose him i'm so sure so many women are going to come out and women are going to come out in numbers cause it's something he does and it's a tactic and i'm glad i found the sign to tell the story i just want to tell you guys to be cautious this guy you meet on online dating apps anywhere any person you meet just be very vigilant and don't be easy don't trust them easily and remember if you're going to be doing something with somebody you do not know and you want to get intimate with them please please use protection so the other thing i forgot to mention it's tmi but let me just mention so the first time the first time us getting intimate he was insisting on no protection and i was like why would you trust me and we don't know each other what if i am um, hiv positive what if your hiv positive and he was there trying to convince me ah you know that's not possible you don't look like you have it you know these things you can never know who has it you know so just be just take care of yourself there's no need for you to like end up getting sick or end up with a long life disease or depression over something you could prevent so i'm urging you if you really have to get cozy with somebody else uh i'm not judging you but just take the necessary precautions use a condom use a condom i'm going to say it is a condom because how many people has he slept with how do we know he's not positive I, i'm not stigmatizing people who have it i'm okay with people living with the disease but why would you risk you having it when you could prevent it in cases where people find themselves having it they didn't know it just happened one time or they were infected by a person they trusted when you want to get cozy with somebody and 
you don't want to use the necessary precautions i hope it's your husband or your boyfriend and it's somebody you trust even your boyfriend or your husband can bring the disease to you the sti there's so many things that happen these days there's so many diseases that are transmitted in this way so yeah just be careful i'm glad i shared my story i'm not ashamed it's something that i will never have talked about in this channel but having found him on some praying on somebody i love and really care about i was like how many people has he done it to and what are the odds what are the odds i'm so sure he doesn't know this person you know how you can meet somebody on these apps and you like you swipe right and you like each other and you start conversing that's the exact situation and it was just god i don't know why we we're even like talking about it and why my close friend showed me the picture and was like what i know this guy he's the guy i was telling you about he's the one who did me dirty and i was broken because i trusted somebody and i didn't have money then i was very very broke and i imagine if i did a lot of things if i did some things with him that he wanted to do and i imagine having done them and now i will still be living with the regrets because you never know the outcome even if they look so beautiful so cute so handsome protect yourself love yourself you come first nobody has your best interests put at heart not everyone has your best interests at heart so be careful I'll see you in my next video. I know the lighting has changed, but I had to do a quick outro to this video. So I hope you guys enjoyed this story time. Please do not forget to give this video a like. Like this video, guys. Please do like it if you enjoyed the video. Comment to the comment section. Let's interact. Don't judge. We are not here to judge. This is a free space. We talk about sensitive things. And we are all about educating, informing, and you know, just because it didn't happen to you doesn't mean it doesn't happen. And this was my experience, and I'm not ashamed about it. I said that before, and I'm actually glad I got it out of my chest. I healed a long time ago, but I saw him recently, and using the same tactics on somebody I know and care about was like so sad because she could end up being. A victim of the same or even worse but all in all i'm just praying that he changes and he just gets a life of his own and a real job you know i was very very lucky because i'm i was a broke person my instagram lies it does lie <laughs> bye guys bye guys i'll see you in my next video mm -hmm.